Really excited for our next fight and a couple of question marks. We've got Megatron Phil Hawes coming in off a wild knockout win from Dana White's Contender Series this past summer. And I mean really looking good because we hadn't seen him on the Contender Series stage in a while and his first time up it wasn't a good look. Now we got Megatron taking on the Mamba, Jacob Alcoon. And Matt, a lot of question marks because for Jacob Malkoon, you can see it in the record 4-0. Oh, he's a main training partner of Robert Whitaker. He's been a mainstay there since 2015. Purple belt, ADCC champ back a year ago on the trial scene over in Australia. And a guy that, you know, he's 4-0. Oh, he's 3-0 oh in boxing. Very well-rounded, we've seen so far. And it's great to have those credentials in grappling. Now, he's coming in against Sanford MMA's Phil Hawes. This is a guy that's day in, day out, training with some of the best martial artists in the world. I mean, the Michael Chandlers, we're talking Kamaru Usman, we're talking Gilbert Burns, the list goes on and on and on out of the training partners that Phil Hawes has had. And we know, too, that he has good wrestling in his back pocket. The leg kicks are great, and the power's amazing. As long as he doesn't gas himself out early, he's got a good shot against some really good competition. For Malkoon, we've seen it in his fights. He is well-rounded. He will accept a fight and get moving and get going. There's just so many question marks, really. Yeah, this, against Phil Hawes, not really a guy who you want to be moving and throwing down with just in the middle of the cage. With Jacob Malkoon, too, it's never a great sign, and I, I'm going to use an NBA draft analogy. The sooner they mention their personality, the worse the player is going to be. Now, with Malkoon, I just hate the fact that every time you try to look up footage or anything, the first thing is, well, he trains the Robert Whitaker. And that's great. I'm sure training with a guy of Whitaker's caliber, you probably learn a ton every single day. Phil Hawes, like you had mentioned, trains with some of the best fighters in the world. Guys like Kamaru Usman, guys like Luke Rockhold. H having Henry Hooked as a coach, like, I again, I don't think just having your training partners being really good is always going to rub off on you. Yeah. But at least Phil Haas has a wide stable of fighters that he can train with in and out daily. And you do have different looks too. And that's what I really like about Hard Knocks or Sanford MMA now. Because guys like Usman, you can train your wrestling with. Burns, your uh, jiu-jitsu. Chandler, your, wrestling, or your striking and your wrestling. Like, There's so many guys at that gym who excel at so many different areas of MMA that every single day you train with a different person and really just kind of learn a whole new skill set. Where with Jacob Malkoon, from what you've seen in his fights, like you had mentioned, he is well-rounded. He's not afraid to kind of play the guard game, but he is a guy who, with only four professional fights, there's only so much learning and experience that you can make up in that time. And when you do kind of look through, he's had a hard time getting fights. There's been a lot of them that have dropped out. And when you are kind of one of the better guys of the regional scene, that is a problem. A lot of guys have it. But Phil Hawes, like, again, at least we know what we're going to get with him. He's been on the Contender Series a few times. Yes, he lost to uh, Julian Marquez in one of those, but, again, the Cuban Missile Crisis, one of the guys who, really coming out of the first season of Contender Series, you thought he was going to be the poster boy for Got the show. Got a pretty big MMA podcast these days, too, with Kendra Lust. There you go. And he had a really big push from the UFC, but it just really hasn't turned out all that great for him. But Phil Hawes, ever since then, has put together four really great finishes. And, and I mean, look at the losses on Phil Hawes' record. Let's pick it apart. You got Julian Marquez, he loses by finish. He submitted with World Series against Lewis Taylor. Lewis Taylor is a PFL millionaire from the first season. Exactly. I mean, it wasn't likely that he went that far, but he did. And a great guy at a Rufus Sport. And then Andrew Alderte Sanchez. Well, he went on to win that season of the Ultimate Fighter, season 23. So Phil Haas has taken on some pretty good competition. Those are losses, but still, four-fight win streak, all four of them by finish against a mixed bag. But still, they all count. And for Jacob Malkoon... 4-0, I get it. And then you look at the how spread out the fights are. Because his first fight was at 21 years old, Brace 47. A Hex Fight Series win over Ryan Hedica, who was 5-4 at the time. Christoph Van Dyke's actually a good win um, on his record, his second-to-last fight. And then against Sebastian Tomesi at Eternal MMA 48 uh, back la this time last year. It's a decent win. I mean, Hex Series and um, Eternal MMA, you see a lot of good fighters coming out of there, I will admit. But overall, too many question marks for me. So it, it is a tough one overall. If you look over on Topology, at a 404 total votes. Error. Uh, Haas, 91% of the votes. 83% see him getting win, the win by knockout. And if we look at the odds, Haas, a pretty big favorite. Open to minus 340. The line jumped up actually on Malkoon. So you got Haas at a minus 275. Uh, opposite Malkoon, a plus 220. I feel fairly confident picking Phil Hawes, unless Jacob Alcoon goes in there, grabs a leg, and submits him. I don't see that happening. So for Phil Hawes, it should be a decent win. I'm really looking forward to the fight, and I think that this guy, with a couple of good performances, could be really on the radar at middleweight.
Okay, I'm not going to go that far. Uh, I, again, I think Phil Hawes is going to be able to get this done. I think the leg kicks and the power will eventually get to Malcoon. I'm not going to say he's going to be in the top 15 by the end of the year or anything, but I do think Phil Hawes is the higher ceiling out of the two. I think he's probably going to be able to done, even by stoppage this weekend. Really looking forward to this fight. We both have Phil Hawes to get the win. I mean, hey, it's a great card. In our main event, you title unification bout of Justin Gaethje taking on Habib Nurmagomedov. So you're going to want to keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks, Matt. And as we always say, let's, let's get, get into it. it.